Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so today, um, uh, sorry, I've been a little bit busy at work. A lot of people have been calling out sick. And then uh, a lot of people are just, just shortage of people. So oh, I've been having to pick up extra shifts. But in any case, we're back. Um, so today I want to do a long a, a review on the um, uh, the WE MP5 um the Apache model. They say on the box it's an A3 model, MP5 A3. I think it's actually considered an A5 model, but I could be wrong. Uh, it's all dependent on like the trigger pack group, uh, and this one includes the burst, so I don't know. I think it's whatever. Point is, uh, after five years, uh, I want to talk about this review and how it's kind of holding up, um, just as an update. Um, so I'm also trying a new format where I'm just going to try to do uh, the audio recording of my thoughts on the review, kind of like a one continuous go, and then I'm gonna like basically try to like take individual photos or videos of the parts that I'm interested in talking about, or the parts I end up talking about in the audio file. That way. I think it's a little bit more coherent um, because uh, I think um, I've been doing this for like, you know, four years since I started as a hobby and uh, it takes a while, but a lot of people have given me pointers and I think slowly and slowly, I think our reviews get slightly better, but man, I had to watch an initial review of this MP5 that I made five years ago. Uh, whew, man, that was some bad camera, <laughs> low quality res, uh, and just just a little bit sloppy. So I'm gonna try to keep this about 20 minutes, uh, 25 minutes, no more than that, um, and then just have an update. Um, so this, of course, is my favorite model. You know, the MP5 A5. Uh, this this specifically style with the kind of like the um, the fatter foregrip. There are the ones that are have the um, uh, there are the slimmer handguards one, but uh, I don't think WE sell, sells them necessarily. You might have to get custom parts. I know SRC, for example, does sell them where they have the little skinny checkered uh, MP5 uh, handguards. Those are a little bit more old school, uh, but these are really nice. Um, I think they do creak a little bit, just a tad bit, but so does the real one, actually. Uh, and so overall, very solid, though. Um, it's held up pretty nicely. The plastic... Um, you know, to this day, after five years, um, isn't all that scratched up. Uh, now, granted, I don't use it that much, and I don't, I mean, I'm pretty gentle about it. I don't try to, you know, uh, try to keep it in boxes, and if I move it, but, you know, every now and then, it's going through some light use, and so, overall, the foregrip still looks nice. No creaking, major creaking. Um, the gun itself is pretty heavy, uh, so when you lift it up, you know, um, for, its, for its package, you would be you would think it's lighter, but it's actually really heavy, which is a nice thing. I think it's accurate to the real, um, the real steel. Uh, uh, that's still looking good. Uh, the stock rail for the collapsible stock is seeing a little bit more wear and tear, specifically, of course, the areas where you see um, the uh, where the positions of the the, uh, the stock can collapse. So it's basically a four position stock. Um, you know. Um, so those are where it's going to be. You're going to see minor wear and tear. It's like kind of like stripes, basically, but not bad. Um, obviously, it depends on whether you use a, the sling or not on um, the sling mounts. Um, and then, of course, the probably the biggest and most notable one that I've seen after looking at the original video I made five years ago review on this is probably the um, the charging handle knob right here. It's a uh, that's true. Um, no sanding required. This you just use it by hand. The the when you smack it. Uh, and the sweat um, from manipulating that, uh, it's gonna rub off the paint. Uh, so it's that's your weathered look that comes after about five years of use. Now I know not all, five years is easy to say five years, but the big question is you know if you only use it once, you know it's no good, right? So I guess the more important question you guys are probably wondering is how many rounds. I don't know. It's so hard to keep up and count accurately, but I want to say about like roughly five or six thousand not probably not a whole lot honestly um i mean relatively speaking you know um because it's just like other ones sometimes you know you kind of forget leave in the closet and you forget it for for about a while and then, and then every time you see a movie like um you know with an mp5 and you go oh that's awesome and take it out and play with it again so but um 
so that's that's kind of uh, where it lands. Um, by the way, uh, Die Hard was not the first. I've never actually seen Die Hard. Uh, my introduction to MP5 was the movie Air Force One. <laughs> Man, that movie made it look cool. Um, uh, and Counter Strike, the the game, this the video game too. Um, the stock, of course, uh, the same amount of wobble from day one to five years later is the same. Um, nothing really different there. Uh, the spring tension uh, in the the stock is pretty much the same, uh, which has held up pretty nicely. So I've sp specifically, since I've kept it under um, closed tension the whole time, uh, as you know, um, sometimes there are uh, leakages in these uh, rubber O rings in the magazine or the gasket specifically. Fortunately, I believe I made a video on this how to change it, um, and it's a nice O ring. Uh, that you can switch for and I've replaced it and it's till this day it's working pretty well so it's a nice cheap fix and the reason I point that out is because um, you know uh, sometimes um, certain companies use like proprietary um, o-rings that are not circles so you have to like either get their version of it or you can do the version where there's like that flex seal I personally don't like to use the um, the gasket maker ones where it's like super hardened uh, because eventually it'll leak again. And if you get the, um, the this is a different video, but um, I made a different video about it. You can check it out. I don't wanna waste too much time on that right now. But uh, yes, short answer is the magazine has held up pretty well. Um, yes, I did have one leak at the base, but I've replaced that and it seems to be working now for the past five years with no issues. Um, the one, the only thing that's broken on me on this gun really is a minor part in the internals. Um, specifically, I believe, I don't know what the term is, but on the bolt, there's this part here where you keep the, um, it slides on the rail. Um, so I don't think this part's really necessary um, because it just kind of helps stabilize it when it travels. But there's two parts, two sides of it. And so the other side's still okay. Just one side broke off, um, and I remember it was just rattling, and all of a sudden it was going to stop firing, and I to open it up, and the chunk was loose. Um, I believe the material inside is, I think it's like that pot metal or the die cast. It's, it's, I don't know what the exact one is, but it's kind of cheap. Um, but regardless, um, it's not a big deal. It still works, right? It's a cosmetic thing. Even if the second, the other side of it breaks off, I don't think it's going to matter. It still works fine, um, and so that's a good thing. Um, um, the other thing that I, this is not really its fault, uh, is the charger candle. I, um, uh, a couple of the videos I've made before I've, you know, actually every time I make a video, I kind of slap the charging handle, um, like the HK slap, cause it's just super cool to do it, but I rarely do it, um, uh, really aggressively. Most of the time I kind of, uh, slide it a little bit gently. I mean, not super gently, but I do smack it around a little bit but not as hard as that um, when I record for the video because it looks cool. Um, the SRC version, however, I slapped that thing. It's, like just, it's just much cheaper than the WE in terms of like the price. So you're a little bit less like reluctant to be to manhandle it. But the MP5, the WE MP5, I kind of, you know, a little ginger it a little bit. Um, and at one point it did, f it fell off. Uh, and so I did use some thread tight, uh, blue non-permanent thread tight to, to, to pin it back on it is metal both the rod and the 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 the, the, the handlebar itself and the the actual attachment point is metal or steel actually so from that point it's not too bad it won't break or anything like that uh, at least i don't think so um re uh, after several years it hasn't been a problem but it will fall off it's an easy fix though and you can attach it and since then it has not been an issue for me um Otherwise, the paint job, you know, uh, it's nothing special. You know, it's not, it's not like Cerakote or anything like that. Just a minor a few scratches here and there um, on the front sight post a little bit. Um, and, um, yeah, that, that's just really cosmetic. Um, but, again, I think that the plastic is really nice on this. Um, the the charging – or sorry, the trigger pack, the selector switch specifically, um, I've, um, you know – I'm very curious to see what um, the VFC model is going to be like. I, I, I didn't want to get it, buy it, but I, I really do like MP5s, and you know what? I've I've gotten a lot of VFC products lately, and man, they are really impressing me. And um, uh, I, I don't know. I've heard mixed feelings about VFC, but some people. But I try to buy these products and make honest reviews um, without any you know, influence. So. Sometimes I buy lemons and it's like totally my fault because I didn't read the reviews. But at least, you know, 
you know, it's it's an extra opinion out there. So we'll see what I think. But I've got an Umpack or a UMP by uh, VFC. And that selector switch, boom, man, that thing is much more stiff. It is very, which is good, um, much more distinct. The MP5, I watched my original videos. You know, it never really was that um, super solid in terms of its selector switch movement. Um, but it's 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 a little bit loose now, but uh, it's still minor clicks. But I think it's definitely worn down a little bit. Um, but still, it stays in its place. It's distinct enough um probably nowhere near as distinct as a click you'll get on like a ghk or a viper tech um selector switch for the m4 series and certainly not like the um the vfc uh ump model but to be fair that's a very new model and so i don't know how that will hold up in time this has been five years making it like me Whew, I could kind of mess around with these switches a lot because it's just one of those cool things to, to do. But again, not bad. Um, as far as the FPS goes, it's still the same. I, I watched the review I made five years ago, you know, with point twos on a day like this. I think it was the same season, actually. Um, room temperature, about 370 FPS. I could have sworn I've seen it shoot 400 FPS. I could have sworn, but I've... I haven't been able to replicate that again. So maybe, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe the spring was different. But anyway, it's still shooting three. It was shooting 360 or 370 five years ago. I recorded again recently. Same thing, 360, 370 with point twos. Um, in my opinion, though, um, it's very hard. I don't know why my chronograph is so, it has such a hard time picking up the FPS. Or not the FPS, the, um, the rate of fire. Um, it seems to me that this MP5 is um, a tad bit slower in terms of rate of fire compared to the U uh, UMP, um, which I believe this MP5, there isn't a problem with the MP5, I think it's totally fine, um, but I think the, uh, man, that thing, that, that U UMP, that thing is like, it's like a buzz sub, it just goes like that, it's crazy. Um, and so I believe it's supposed to be the other way around where the MP5 is supposed to be, you know, a little bit faster, whereas the UMP, UMP is supposed to be a little bit slower because especially with the 40, the real version is a 45, so it knocks around a little bit harder. I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison so you can kind of see it. I think even though I can't measure it with the Chrono machine here, I managed to do it once with the UMP by VFC and it was like 1200 rounds per minute. I could not do it with the MP5, but I think if I just played it and then divide the number of rounds by whatever, I think it would, or by seconds, whatever I can, you know, put on the screen here for you guys to see. Um, as far as, uh, oh, the only problem, and this was always a problem when I've, when I've had it, so it was nothing really new. Um, the, um, what do you call it? Uh, it's always like for so for example like on the WE when I had the the XM one seventy seven I had when I first got it brand new I had that bolt lock problem several times um, it was always a problem until after I replaced you know the, I did all these things to replace I tried to put the shims on the side I tried to adjust the buffer tube I had to do a lot of stuff and it just never worked reliably until after it turns out it was the trigger pack and I replaced the trigger pack inside the WE and it worked so. On the WE MP5 here, um, when I got it, I think I've mentioned this before, you know, uh, there's a little switch on the back of the magazine here, which you're supposed to activate, or on top of the magazine, sorry, in which you're supposed to activate in order so that when it's out, it won't continue to dry fire. It will stop uh, the gun from firing. Uh, hence, you know, an empty magazine, uh, the equivalent of a bolt lock, even though there isn't a bolt lock on this model, but it's supposed to stop firing. For some reason on this model, it doesn't do that. I don't know how to fix it. I've tried numerous things. You know, it's this thing. I'll show you the video or the pictures where it's supposed to um, activate and lift when it's out. It's supposed to lift up this part here, and that's in a way will stop the mag or the the gun from firing. I have a feeling it has something to do with the trigger pack, and I think I think if I replace the trigger pack, I can get this resolved. But to spend eighty dollars plus shipping, which totals up to be like one hundred twenty bucks for a new trigger pack i don't think it's worth it just to have one fix so the only problem i have with this is that it's not as realistic because if you're out you find yourself just shooting a bunch of blanks basically so let's see if we can um, try to loosen up this um part right here as you saw in the photos probably already um when the hammer strikes well the hammer's already pulled forward in this case but that's why this part is down right here and that that's the part that hits the magazine so when the magazine runs out it'll push 
up like this, and when it pushes up, it uh, it raises above the point where it won't impact the um, output valve, so it won't hit the release button and it won't release the gas. Um, when there are rounds in the chamber, the switch won't push it up. So right now, I think this is too. It's possible that this is too. The spring tension is too much, right? And so that's one thing. Um, as far as the you know the magazine goes, um, I I don't think uh, you know it's it's it seems to have some problems on uh, when it's on the uh, the fast mode, uh, you know what I mean, right? Um, and sometimes what I mean by that is like you'll get like one or two BBs that come out pff, straight really fast, right? But maybe the four third or fourth potentially rounds would kind of like just fall out, um, and then um, occasionally that's an issue. Uh, so it seems that maybe on completely um, on when it on when it's on like the the three, I, I can't say it out loud. I don't want to change the policy here, but on YouTube, but when it's on the this selector here, the three um, the, let's call them lights, the three lights indicator here, it's not too bad, um, you know. And when it's on the four or on the full one right here, uh, it could potentially be a problem. Uh, but in any case, um, you know, minor nitpick. Um, right there, not a big deal. It's really a testament to the quality of WE products, I think. Um, I know some people kind of rag on them, um, and keep in mind that there, and especially, um, there are some people who actually are legitimately curious. You know, these are kind of expensive, like for four hundred fifty, I think almost five hundred dollars after shipping. You know, uh, you're kind of wondering, is this money well spent? And I think I can tell you. You know, um, it's not bad. I think if you like the look of the MP5, um, this is an, a solid model. It lacks the trades, like I think we talked about. You know, there's literally no trades. Um, and I'm not going to be able to talk about the VFC model um, until I get it. I haven't gotten it yet, so I'll, I'll have to mess around with that for another five years. But <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, but... Um, you know, um, it's a little bit expensive, but I think, um, you know, I should probably, you can watch my update on the MP5. I have an SRC version, which is a bit cheaper. Um, and that actually is pretty, another good option for some people. Again, the model's a little bit different, so it depends on what your 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 liking is. You know, some people like this, the, 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 the red colored ink uh, markings. Other people like the more old school version on the SRC version. Um, Keep in mind, however, the SRE is at CO2 only, and it presents its own problems too with that. Um, and this is a little more of a, a, a green gas version, which I think is just easier to manage. Um, but yeah, I think it's uh, it's worth it. You know, everything is going to have some parts that break, right? Even if you get the real MP5, right? And, you know, as quality and realistic or reliable or those are, you're gonna have to have some parts that you have to replace, right? Whether it's the spring, the extractor, whatever it is, I don't know. You know, um, you know, you're, it's something's gonna have to be replaced. You know, um, and so when someone asks, like, is it worth it? Is it gonna break on you? In you know, after a couple of shots. Probably not, right? Um, it will probably last you for some time. But can a single part break? Yeah, totally, right? It may or may not really matter that much. Like in my case, you know, the parts that broke weren't really an issue or it was easily fixable. Um, or, you know, a leakage, you can fix it with, um, you know, your, your O-rings that you can replace it. Um, so there, there might be minor issues, but would I say that there's, um, if you pay $400, $500 for this, and would there be a catastrophic failure in which the gun is completely useless? No, not at all. I think that's the thing to take home, you know. Um, yes, it's an expensive investment, and you might even have to pay a little bit extra. You might even get something kind of like in my case, in which it was kind of a lemon in terms of the... Um, uh, the last round stop stoppage where it's supposed to not fire anymore um, And I'm not gonna pay a hundred bucks just to get that replaced to get the parts to replace it I'm not even sure that's gonna fix the problem to be honest with you. <laughs> All right, it probably will I'm pretty confident that would fix it, but I don't know if that will be or not um, internals by the way, I forgot to mention um, the uh, Internals on the we m4 series a little bit unrealistic. Uh, it's more of a trigger pack uh, if but uh, on the other hand, for the MP5 version, man, their internals are really pretty much liking. To, it looks like the real. It looks very realistic uh, compared to the uh, the re the real steel one. Uh, so very solid uh, stuff there. Um, let's see what else is there. Um, of course, in terms of accuracy, you know this one. Um, uh, you know, most of the time you're supposed to use this for like the CQB space. You know, so we're thinking like you know within like. Uh, 
you know, 50 feet, 50 foot range, you know, maybe a hundred, obviously you can go out further, right? Um, but you know, that's not what the MP5s are designed for, at least the real version, right? In the airsoft model, pff, doesn't really matter that much, right? Uh, whether it's like a 14 inch barrel or like a, I think there's like a nine or eight and a half inch or something like that, something barrel. Um, the FPS will be reduced a little bit, obviously, with a shorter barrel, but it's not going to be, um, you know, you can still go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any other one out there. The trajectory, however, is a little bit different. Like um, I might have mentioned earlier, this one tends to uh, shoot a little bit high um, as you go further and further out. So you do have to adjust if it's in that awkward range between, like, so for example, if you're shooting, you're aiming at like a 20 so a target, a paper target that's at 20 feet, it'll land where you're aiming. But at 30 feet, it's going to jump up significantly higher. 40 feet, it's going to go like way over the target. So you have to kind of compensate. But after that 40 feet, 40, 50 feet, it goes back on target. And so you can just aim where you normally aim. So it's kind of like that uh, curved shaped uh, object right there. Um, for some reason, this model, um, by the way, can't, Myth was missing these thread protectors. I don't know why, um, but that is your standard industry standard 14 millimeter negative clockwise or counterclockwise so uh, everything that's normal should fit on there um, if you're wanting to any mock suppressors or anything like that um, overall um, like i said pretty good um, you know uh, as a collector piece i just can't get enough of this version you know i wish i think they do sell the uh, the full the full stock version um, but uh, you know one of the nice things that would be nice is that, you know, it's just much cheaper to buy um, if you could get a full stock and replace it when you need it and swap it with the collapsible when you want it. That way, you, you know, if you ever get tired of the folding stock version or this collapsible stock, you can switch to the folding stock or the full stock. Um, um, but yeah, I just never actually have that. The SRC, I do have a full stock version and a collapsible, which I switch back every now and then. Um, um, so yeah, I think that's um, I think those are the big ticket items right now um, after five years. So basically, it's still in bottom line, you know, was it worth it? Totally. Um, you know, uh, is it better than the uh, SRC? Hard to say. Um, but uh, I do think. Oh, the only downside I want to say is like I, I do think the uh, you know when it's on like the uh, the fast mode, it's a little bit more um sluggish compared i mean every gbbr is going to have some issues on when it's on the fast mode right but it seems like for example like uh the umpac or the U ump the ump right it that thing is just like psh, no problem i think it zips through no problem on a, a i mean the, the magazine is you know more limited this is a larger magazine but it just seems that the cool down effects for this mp5 is a little bit more noticeable um compared to the UM, ump um, and I'm, I'm really curious to see how it stacks up against the VFC model. Um, but, uh, um, but again, it's not terrible. It's just a minor limitation in my opinion. Um, so I'm always a little bit reluctant to go, um, you know, uh, completely fast on this model. Um, so keep it in burst, keep it in burst, you know? Um, and of course I, I already talked about how like occasionally on when it's more than three or four rounds, occasionally you'll get that round that kind of falls out of the barrel or kind of comes out with a very weak FPS. I don't know why. Uh, maybe something to do with the hop up. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, that's, I think that's the gist of it. So let me know, um, you know, if there's anything else you guys want to know about this one. Um, that was a quick overview, an update more so after uh, five years uh, of this product. You know, it's just um, very sentimental to me. I got this after I uh, finished school. I got my first job and I got this at a celebration. And, um, you know, I am almost done paying off all my student loans and here I am looking at it again, you know, <laughs> so this is the, the model that's, um, that's been with me for a while. So hopefully it will continue to stay, um, stay solid, but, uh, who knows, maybe the, uh, you know, I'll see what the VFC model shows up to be. And, um, maybe the VFC model might, uh, make this model become obsolete. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I'll, um, you know, uh, I'll make some, make a model to VFC. Obviously it won't be as, you know, uh, comprehensive because you know I have just obviously more time with this model. I've had this for five years. It's crazy. Um, um, and um, so yeah. Uh, all right. See you guys.